I uh, will begin as I began at lunchtime, uh, which is to remind everybody that this is a white settler society and that we live uh, in an ongoing colonial project. And it's sometimes very difficult to remember just how ongoing it is, principally because a lot of effort goes into uh, preventing us from realizing that land theft is still going on and is going on in multiple ways. So, you know, you can steal mining, steal forests, you can damage communities, you can impoverish them, you can do, you have to do a number of, you know, widely sort of variant strategies in order to actually steal the land and keep it as your own. And so we ought to remember that we are in the throes of a full blown ongoing colonialism. It's not in the past. The police manage. Aboriginal people through an idea, the idea that they are somehow different from the rest of us, owing to culture, owing to frailties, owing to some innate pathological condition, owing to anything but colonialism. So the inquest, I believe, sheds light on how through the idea of Aboriginal difference, law manages this relationship so that we don't see the violence. In fact, Aboriginal people are rendered in the law as too abject, too dysfunctional, too sick, too damaged to govern themselves and consequently too damaged to own the land and govern the land. And I believe that law is a principal site where this kind of story is played and replayed so that we could all learn the lesson not only did we, uh, you know, do right in stealing their land, but it, it's best that we continue to do so because they in no way, shape, or form are able to govern it. Now, I want to just remind you about this colonial city, which I had cause to, to remember today. Remember that the, this world cut in two, this colonial city, is initially set up by the Indian Act. Reserves are supposed to be out there. Aboriginal people are out there. The town is supposed to belong to white settlers. That's the law. Sometimes we have a past system to enforce it, but mostly by the 1880s after the Riel Rebellion, we figure out we need a lot of Northwest Mounted Police, and later on the RCMP, to be able to police this because settlers have a problem on their hands. This is an occupation. So, uh, I want to remind you about that because the idea of the drunk Aboriginal body in the city as not belonging in public space at all is a, is a problem that has a very long colonial history and it, it, it moves into the present. So although I am frequently told by people, oh, what happens to Aboriginal people in cities or from the police is what happens to anybody who is homeless uh, or alcoholic, while I would agree that those groups are not well treated either, I really want to insist not only on the colonial past of this problem, but the colonial present. You do have a problem with Aboriginal bodies in the city, not least because they will remind you what kind of place you're in. The fiction of the settler state falls apart because these are bodies that bear the imprint of, of, of colonial power. You can't continue to tell the same story of being good and being peaceful with these bodies. So these bodies become the space of the greatest disorder, the point at which the, the official story is contested. The police operate to guarantee the aims that the legal system fails to achieve. This is what one scholar is, is arguing is this outer limit. This is the place where you have to hold territory because you've won it everywhere else. But in this place, in the Aboriginal body itself, and particularly in spaces where you could do that kind of control under the guise of evicting from the settler city, it is in this zone that you will get this continuous violence. This zone, which I'm calling you know, the park or the encounter with the Aboriginal body, is a zone where it's impossible to tell if the law is being broken. And the reason it's impossible to tell is because in this particular zone, there are a whole bunch of other stories going on about why the police must be doing what they're doing. And so Aboriginal spaces and Aboriginal bodies 
can be seen as territorial challenges, a material as well as a symbolic provocation that you answer, if you're the settler or the settler's police, with acts of violence.